Are you ready, Matt? Yeah. Is the tape running? Yeah. You're done. No. Surrender. This world will never know another individual like my father. A simple man with a big heart that he shared with a small circle. His family was his world, and the rest of the world didn't mean much. He was a provider, the hero of my life, and most definitely my biggest fan. Do you remember the times of your life? My father was the greatest friend I could have ever asked for. You knew he loved you without saying a word. Just a good, true-hearted person that left an impact on everyone he met. My husband was the most selfless person I ever met in my life. He didn't want anything for himself. New clothes, new cars. He didn't even want new sneakers. It's like he didn't even need anything. He just wanted to see us happy and give us everything we needed. And he absolutely succeeded in doing that. Do you remember? My brother, he was the best guy you ever want to meet. He didn't know the word now. Whatever you ask him, he said, okay. My brother-in-law was one man who you could always depend on. He was a go-to guy, always ready to help, always willing to lend a hand. Anytime I needed him, if it was to complain, just to talk to him about something happy, he was always there for me and I love him very much and miss him every day. He was my baby brother. He helped everybody and uh, he was very, very nice. I don't ever remember him not being the helper, the workhorse. Older than most of us, but with more energy and can run circles around us. There was never not enough time to go the extra mile, do something a little special, just for enjoyment of the family. It just came through what a good man he was, how much he loved his family, how much he loved his sons, his wife, everyone. He gave us everything and he asked for nothing. He was born with nothing. This is a man who came here from another country, born without the bare necessities, and in the course of one generation, single-handedly gave everything and more to his children and every subsequent generation. He was proud of the fact that he was sacrificing so that we could have better than he had. He built this family from nothing and he'll be remembered forever because of it. He was born 1950, and uh, he went to school in Italy. He lived at the base of a mountain in a small town called Solapaca. Born on the floor in his house, barely survived the delivery, and he would tell us stories. Stories that we just never believed, <laughs> but they were, I guess, all true. We used to go on a, on a farm and you know, pick up some of the fruit. Finally, we, uh, we decided to come in America. The name of the boat was Queen Federica. Everybody got on the boat and they were playing Arriva de Chiroma, Luba, 13, 14. Coming over here in the 60s and crazy political times, he went to school to learn how to speak English. He learned how to run computer programs. Yeah, how about your CD ROM? became a paper hanger, and eventually worked as a salesman in recycling. But the one thing that he taught himself was how to play the guitar. I bought a guitar in Germany. I figured I'm gonna learn, but I was too lazy, so I give it to Sam. He started playing guitar, he got very good at it. 
Anybody in the family got married, a birthday, Sal got the group together and play for us. And they never charge anything. And besides that, he used to give a gift. <laughs> And even when we say, no, 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 Sal, we want you to come, we want you to eat, we want you to relax, you don't have to work. He would always insist, and he was always right, though. So he played my wedding, he was fantastic in the old days, then he played at my daughter Samantha's wedding. He played music at his own wedding. Everybody had a good time, people danced like crazy. He was the best entertainment around. Nobody compares to Adonis. <laughs> Sal had a band for a very long time. We put dance music medleys together from the 70s and 80s, and things started to happen. We started to be noticed. I look at it as fun and not work. We were all doing what we love to do and making money at the same time. We had lots of people come and go in the band and then come back, but it was always us, you know. Even though it's not the same now, it's, you can at least say, we did this. Things will never be the same. Our get togethers, our weddings, and not just because of the music. And I'll never ever forget him. But I don't have to because I see him and his sons every day. One, two, three. My dad taught me how to play the guitar. He taught me everything I know. He would take me into his room and he would play his guitar and I would play mine and he would show me chords and riffs. It was mesmerizing and I knew I had to be like him. Go, go, go! Go, go, go! Very good soccer player. He teaches us how to play soccer. Run, 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 run! And he would always do magic tricks, and I thought he was incredible. I was like, I actually loved my uncle. I thought we were going to get married. <laughs> <laughs> I did! He taught me jokes, life lessons. He would just have that special type of laugh and smile. <laughs> you couldn't help but laugh along with him. <laughs> Sal was the person who taught me how to ride a bike for the first time. He was the person who took me uh, on trips to see the Liberty Bell. He took me to the art museum. And he had not only seen everything, but was so educated on it all. We would take a ride all the way down the shore just to get Manco and Manco's pizza. We'd eat a whole pie, just the two of us. And he would always take me to the movies, every movie I ever wanted to see. You know, to Aunt Pina's house in Warminster. He used to love it to come up here. He come and said, Pina, what do you want to eat? You want a pizza, cheese steak, what do you want? On the weekends, he would come in and wake me up and he says, you want McDonald's? And he would fix my pancakes for me. We would take rides up to the mountains. The further up we go, the more you're going to find. Even if we drove all the way to Crystal Cave and he was too stubborn to look it up and realize it was closed, it was always about who we went there with and the fact that we were together. We would listen to the Beatles for the whole ride and he would always say, Nick, they're the best. Oh, send my love to you. It was just time we spent together, and I'm really glad I have those memories. I think of driving around in the big white van, driving to and from Disney. Sal would print out the directions or have things handwritten, even though I felt like he already knew where to go and it wasn't my place to tell him to make a right or a left when he had to. <laughs> He didn't believe in GPS. He would always make a dry run just to make sure he knew how to get there. He was the, the guy for directions. I mean, he had back routes to anywhere you had to go to, and he knew every road. Now, I remember one night my father's car broke down when he was uh, up in the Poconos. Sal drove from here up to get him and then back six hours when he was just my neighbor. 
Little did we know he was going to be my son-in-law. He did many, many things for me. I have fond memories of Sal. I went and I lived with him and my daughter for several months. Okay, you got a three? Oh no. Sal and me used to play cards, 500 rummy. I tried, I tried. I just couldn't beat him. <laughs> you never could get the best of him, and everyone knew that, and it drove people crazy, that they could not upset him or knock him off his game. He wouldn't allow it. He is like the kindest person, never got mad at anybody. He used to say, it doesn't matter. People are allowed to think what they want. It doesn't matter how people feel. We're family, and everybody's entitled to their own opinion. He always respected my opinion, even though probably I was wrong a lot of times, but he did. Sal was sometimes not the easiest person to deal with. You can never change his mind about anything, but you can never stay mad at him. This is the entertainment that we provided tonight. <laughs> It wasn't always easy watching him do the things he did with his concoctions and his homemade apparatuses, but he was smart and he knew they would work. Had so much ingenuity and creativity that he really used to blow us away with some of his creations. And the one thing that will always remind me of him every day of my life is duct tape. He would duct tape everything and anything, new, used, old, didn't matter. He taped everything in our house. He taped doorknobs, light switches, bungee cords and razor blades all over the house. I remember he loved to wrap his big gulp cups in my kitchen towels. He thought this was insulating the drink. And you know what? He was friggin' right. And I used to get so mad. I would make homemade soup and as soon as I would give it to him, he would get the bottle of ketchup and squirt it in there. The soup wouldn't be complete without pretzels in it. People made fun of him and he always welcomed it because he knew that they were missing something that he had and they were just jealous. G-19. No, there's no G-19, Sal. I used to like how he would mess up the, the titles to songs. Oh, like, we made fun yeah. of him. The Bristol Stump. 1099 instead of 1999. Mm -hmm. you know. How about when he sang the wrong words to the Italian songs? <laughs> <laughs> he kind of talked in puzzles. You know you got, the gears were turning in my head to try to figure out a lot of times what he was trying to say. Anything he did, you could tell he did it. He had such a unique heart and soul, you could spot it from a mile away. He typically wore the same getup. <laughs> a white undershirt, black basketball shorts pulled up high with the shirt tucked in and he was barefoot too like man this is a real Italian dad I love it and even though he had a true Italian heritage it's important to know how proud he was to be an American he always said no matter who's president tomorrow I still have to get up for work and do my best and provide for my family and that's what he did every day and he never got to retire I miss him so much, it's unbelievable. Yeah, he was my, my idol as a brother, you know. All the stuff he accomplished with the music, went to college, and the jobs he did, it, yeah, he was amazing. If he was here right now, I'd like to just tell him that, you know, I miss him and I love him. And um, I think he knew, I think he knew. I want people to remember the impact he made on them and just try to keep his memory alive because he deserves it bring up stories, bring up funny things he did, say something he would say or do something he would do, and you'll smile thinking about him. We all love you, and we will work every day to continue making you proud and doing right by the legacy that you left for us. And although you are in this world no longer, this world will never forget you. As time goes on,
That's the wrong way. 